Okay, so recently I asked the brilliant people that follow a clever chimp on Facebook a rather perplexing mechanics conundrum. Here I have a spool, and it's clear to see that the inner diameter of the spool is smaller than its outer diameter. Now if I was to take this and place it flat on the table with the string coming out from underneath the spool, like so, the question is, if I was to pull this string, what would happen to the spool? Would it roll away from my hand? Would it roll towards my hand? Or would it remain in the same position? Now, if this is the first time that you're watching this video, or you didn't get a chance to vote in the poll on Facebook, I'm giving you that opportunity now to vote in the poll up at the top corner of this video, whilst I roll this intro. So thanks very much to everybody who got involved on the Facebook page and gave the question a go. And if you like these kind of questions, then I suggest you go and like the page because we post these sorts of questions rather regularly. So without further ado, let's find out what happens. So here we have our spool completely at rest. It's not moving, so there's no initial roll on it or anything like that. Uh, we have the string coming out from underneath it. No tension is on that at the moment. It's just completely slack. So let's now just pick it up and see what happens when I pull it. Hmm. Okay. So it coils itself back up. All right, let's try that again. So it's it's coiling itself back up. It's not unraveling or anything like that. It's actually coming back towards me as I pull it. Let's have a little think about what's going on here. If this feels odd or unintuitive to you, then I get it, you know, it's coiling itself back up towards the direction I'm pulling it from. And everything else that we're met with in life, usually in, in any case, that is wrapped up in a similar way, tends to roll away from us, like toilet roll or a ball of string. And yet with this, it coils itself back up and comes towards you. In order to understand this, in order to understand this, what we need to do is create what's called a free body diagram. And all that means is that we isolate the forces that are acting on this spool, all the external forces that are acting on this spool, so that then we can come to some conclusions as to what's actually going on. Okay, so here we have our spool with the inner and outer circumferences highlighted. And we'll call the outer circumference radius uppercase R, and the inner circumference radius lowercase r. So let's have a little think about the forces that are acting on the spool. We have its weight, which is its mass times gravity, acting in the center of the spool directly down. And therefore that creates a reaction force from the table onto the spool, which we'll call n, acting directly up. Next we have the tension force from the string, and that's acting completely horizontally out towards the right. Now there's one more force that we need to add to this diagram, and that's the frictional force. Now frictional forces always oppose the direction of motion. We have our tension force here that is wanting to induce an anti-clockwise rotation about the center of the spool. But the spool is on the table, so therefore the surface of the spool relative to the table is moving left to right, which means then that the frictional force is going to be applied in the direction right to left. Now we need to apply Newton's second law to the spool, and Newton's second law states that the sum of the external forces acting on a body will equal that body's mass times its acceleration. So what we'll do is we'll do this for all the horizontal forces first, with the positive direction being from left to right. 
So we have the tension force T minus the friction force F is equal to the mass times the spool's acceleration in the X direction. Now let's work out the forces in the Y direction, in the positive Y direction. We're left with the reaction force M minus the weight of the spool Mg is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the Y direction. And because of the fact that we know that this spool isn't going to be flying off up or down at any time soon, we can say that the acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero, so therefore we know that the reaction force N is equal to mg, as we would have expected. So let's go back and have a look at the forces in the x direction quickly. We know that the spool is initially at rest. It's in equilibrium. It's not accelerating anywhere and it's not moving, okay? So we know that at the instant we apply that tension force T, we can safely say that at that instant in time, the acceleration in the X direction is still zero. And therefore, we can come to the conclusion that we can have the tension force T minus the friction force F equaling zero. So therefore, at that instant, the tension force T is equal to the friction force F. This is translational equilibrium. And this kind of makes sense in just everyday understanding of friction is that I can apply a force onto this unanimate object here and it's not moving. But that's because the frictional force is acting against the force that I'm applying and it will match it up until a point. It will match it until I overcome the static friction and it can only go to a certain limit and then it will start accelerating. But up until that point, the force I'm applying is being matched perfectly by the friction force. And so that's exactly what's going on here. The tension force we're applying to the spool is being matched by the friction force on the ground from the table. So that's translational equilibrium. That means that it's not sliding anywhere. It's not moving from one point to another sliding. But that doesn't mean that it's in equilibrium in terms of rotational equilibrium. So let's take moments about the center of mass and we'll define our positive direction as anti-clockwise. And so therefore we have the tension force multiplied by the inner radius R minus the frictional force multiplied by the outer radius capital R. And that is equal to what is called the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration of the spool. And it's not important what the moment of inertia is, only that it's defined by the object's mass and shape. And if you, if you want to just picture what it means, if you think of an ice skater and they jump up into the air and spin, they bring their they bring their hands in close to them to reduce their moment of inertia, to therefore increase their angular acceleration. And so that's essentially what it is. But in terms, in terms of what we're dealing with here, it's fixed. It's a constant because the moment of inertia isn't changing. The shape of the spool isn't changing and its mass isn't changing either. And so therefore it's a constant. And so because we have worked out that the tension force T is equal to the frictional force F and that the outer radius capital R is greater than the inner radius small r, we can deduce that the tension force T multiplied by the inner radius R minus the frictional force F multiplied by the outer radius capital R is less than zero, it is going to be a negative because we have a situation where we have a small number minus a bigger number, which therefore means that it's going to end up as a negative number. And hence, we can safely say that the angular acceleration must be less than zero, and therefore it must be negative. And since we have defined our positive direction when working out these moments as anti-clockwise, that correlates to 
a clockwise angular acceleration. And so therefore we can safely say that it's going to roll to the right. The spool is going to rotate in a clockwise fashion and roll to the right, roll in the direction that the tension force is pulling it. So what about if we pull the string straight up? What's gonna happen then? Well, it rolls away from us. And I mean, that, that's kind of intuitive. Like that, I, I think we would all expect that to happen. You pull it straight up, it rolls away from us, right? So with that in mind then, logically speaking, there has to be a point or an angle at which I can pull this string that the spool neither rolls away nor towards my hand. Or in other words, there has to be an angle at which it stops rolling towards my hand and starts rolling away from my hand. But I think we'll leave that for another video. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope this has answered the question as to why it rolls towards my hand. And I look forward to continuing this discussion and figuring out what angle, what angle I must pull that string to make sure that it doesn't roll away nor towards my hand. If you like the video, then it would be amazing if you could leave it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of me going through mechanics problems like this. Thanks very much for watching guys. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.